I'm coming to you today from the top side of a Ford Transit van. This is the 350, and right over there is the 250, the big, beautiful beast and light foot. What I'm doing today is I'm putting up my racks, my roof racks, and uh, this is the first time that I have not done a DIY self-fabricated roof rack. Primary reason for that, uh, the Ford vans, because they're so tall, I su suppose, uh, maybe the, the, the sheet metal is not as heavy as the other two vans, as thick. Um, the the uh, weight rating up here is not so great. So I wanted to uh, shave some poundage off of my roof rack. Now, I do have to put awnings on these two vans, and I do have to mount solar panels up here. So even with the minimum amount of DIY 80-20 rack that I would build, I think this system is uh, more practical. It's lighter and it is prefabricated to mount the Fiamma awning, prefabricated for 80-20 crossbars. So really what I'm saving is the si saving in weight uh, is the side rails my side rails would end up being heavier and I'd have to do more building or more engineering in order to uh, allow for the awning mounting and whatnot, as you saw me do on Sam's van. ProMaster can take that extra weight on the roof. These uh, transits, I guess because they're so high, I don't know, but it makes sense to me to keep that center of gravity as low as possible. So that was the big reason for going with these racks. This is a company called uh, Flatline Van Company. Flatline Van Company. It's the last thing I want to do is Flatline. Uh, but it's a really nice product. It's a very, very high quality product. It comes packaged very well, shipped easily with UPS. I'm going to do an install today. That's what I'm working on. So the Ford Transit, uh, they do make provision for putting up roof racks, ladder racks, luggage racks, whatever you want to do. And you've got a pre-threaded mounting point behind this little weather cap. There are five on each side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove these weather covers off of the van, and I'll show you what's up with that. Uh, the flat line video tells you to use a chisel to take this off and scrape off the glue. I'm using a dash tool, a plastic dash tool. And as it turns out, this is just fine. And one thing I learned in doing this, peel up with the tool as little as possible. Uh, and then when you pull it, it removes most of the glue, most of the adhesive. And the other thing they tell you to do is to scrape the glue off with that same chisel. Nay, nay, I'm using lacquer thinner. And lacquer thinner will take this glue off in short order, very quickly. Uh, I'll use some shop towels. I peel off a section and then I rip it in half. There's no need on wasting a whole paper towel. A little lacquer thinner and just go around this in a circular motion. And really, in short order, all the glue is gone. Flip your paper towel. And I see you got the other half for the next hole. You call me a cheapskate. So when you remove this little weather cap, you're gonna notice that there's a hole in the roof and then you can see your threaded insert. It's like a plus nut. The hole in the roof and the threaded insert don't always line up. Imagine. Uh, I did that whole side of this van and they all lined up perfectly. This side, the first two I've opened up, no good. So I've got to file away uh, some of the hole. I gotta elongate these holes. This one's even worse than this one. I find that to be totally unacceptable. I don't understand that one bit. Let's see if this fits now. Yes. All right. 
So this one fits. Now, my concern is that with such a great offset, okay, we're still covering that hole with our weather pad, because they give you, they give you this foam pad that goes on the bottom of your bracket. See, there's your bracket, there's your pad. Uh, then they give you a really cool washer. Where, here it is. This is a compression, it's a cupped washer. Uh, and it's got rubber, a rubber gasket. Now this thing is engineered so tightly that it's got to be screwed on to your bolt. I think this is an M6 bolt. Everything is stainless steel, very nice. But yeah, look at this. I've got to thread that cupped washer on. Uh, so that's gonna be a nice uh, weather tight solution. Now, when I looked at this job, I said to myself, self, I think we're gonna put a little ring of silicone around each of these holes. But then I thought about it. Uh, I'm not sure how that silicone is gonna react and play nice with these foam gaskets. So rather than do that, as they uh, suggest in their instructions, once this is all assembled, I'll run a bead around the perimeter of this thing, similar to what we do with the fans and the air conditioners. If in the future, God forbid, heaven help us all, there's a leak, it's easy enough to come up here and add more. So you see the order? I got the, the M, M6 bolt with that cupped washer. That goes through the bracket. It's a very nice bracket. Then through the pad, then you line it up with your hole. Now, of course, you know that before I put that bolt in there, I'm going to slather it with some Loctite. The rest of the nuts that go on this rack are nylocks. So the Loctite is not necessary. So you thread this in. Make sure your, your pad is lined up nicely. Uh, I could tell you right now what the, I could see what my problem's gonna be. And now I know why they've got a slotted hole in the top of these brackets. Okay, the mounting hole is just a single hole. Uh, how can we get there? See that? Single hole. But the one that you mount the rack to is slotted. And now I know why. Because these threaded plus nuts are not on the same line, on the same plane. So you'll do the best you can with the bracket and get that squared up. But then when you put your, your side rail on, you've got some play to adjust. I don't understand how this could be that far off. Now they give you a little wrench and a little Allen key to complete this whole project. But what I would say to you is be a man and use real tools. So you see, as I tighten this, that cupped washer flattens down. There's some nice tension on it. And they don't talk about any torque setting for this bolt. The other thing I would suggest to you, see I'm working on the roof up here. Uh, I've got a piece of uh, foam insulation, small piece of foam insulation that I'm using as a tabletop for my tools, right? The things that could scratch the paint. So you gotta find something, not a piece of plywood, that'll scratch the paint. It should be soft on one side. That's it. You go down the line, you peel up, you clean the glue, you drill out this if you have to. Here's a bracket. Put all the brackets on, then I'll come back and show you how we put on the, the sidebars. As you can see now, I got the entire front half of the rack assembled up on the roof. I did the full length on the passenger side, the two side pieces and all the brackets. So up front here on the driver's side, I'm doing this back half with you to show you how it's done. Uh, I, as I assembled the front half of this side rack. It comes in two pieces and I put in a couple of crossbars um, 
just so you can see how this squares up. What I recommend is you can torque down your brackets. Get those locked in with your Loctite. They're not gonna be moving. But the rest of this rack, uh, yes, I did Loctite it, but I didn't torque them down all the way. I kept everything loose. Um, the, the width or length of these crossbars is gonna dictate where these brackets, where these side rails fall on the bracket. And as I told you, they are, they're uh, ovalized holes. They're oblong holes wherever you need them to be. There's one in the bracket on the roof and there's one in the side rail. So you've got a lot of mobility. That was very good engineering, smart. The other thing is you've got these fixed positions where you can screw in your crossbars, but they also give you these long, thin, notched channels for the crossbars. So it's basically anywhere you need to put these crossbars, you're gonna be able to do so. And this is a one inch by two inch 8020. It's the 10 series in black. And it's the type that has the grooves in it. And uh, I like that. You know, I've got a theory about that, that uh, any wind flow that's gonna come across this thing, if it were smooth, it could create a harmonic a vibration, but I think these little ridges in here um, creates a disturbance and you don't get the harmonic. That's just my theory, okay? And I'm not Copernicus. Uh, so I'm gonna get this next one in place. Uh, basically, um, the rear sections, there's four sections to these side rails. The rear two have three mounting holes for brackets on the roof. The front two have two mounting holes for roof brackets. Okay, so now you get an understanding of orientation. The other, the other way to know left and right or driver passenger, port and starboard, this driver's side or port side rail in the front has these lower notches. That's to accept the ladder going down the side. That's another one of the uh, accessories that Flatline offers is a nice ladder you can clamp on. That would go right here. So knowing this goes here, you're able to ascertain where the others go. And besides, I just had a thought. Flatline might have something to do with mountain biking or single tracking. I don't know. I don't think it means Flatline like that. I had that thought while I was putting these racks on and I didn't want to diss the company, you know? I didn't want to talk trash about the company. So, um, again, you've got your little screws and on the back side you put a washer and a nylock nut and you know that washers have a, a finished side and an unfinished side. It has to do with polishing as well as a chamfer, a, a little, little break on the edge there. So keep that in mind when you're putting these, uh, putting any washer in place, the nice side should face the nut. Nice nut. So these are nylocks. So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting them in place and screwed down till they just offer some resistance. Get them all in place, then I can come back and tighten them down. There we go. All right, so there's a little resistance. We can hold the rack in place. Let me get this out of here. Geronimo. And then lastly, there's a marriage plate, a bridge plate that comes inside here and it ties the two halves together with uh, four bolts, bolts and washers. Kabish, My crossbars are what keep me square and spaced going down the line as I assemble this rack. So now I can go in and out, front and back. So you've got a lot of play. And like I say, you bring in those crossbars and uh, that's how you're gonna get yourself lined up and squared up where you wanna be. So I don't recommend tightening these up. Have I made that point clear? So I've taken this rack as far as I wanna take it. 
uh, to this point in time. Uh, I gotta put my air conditioner in place, okay? Now in order to do that, I've gotta go underneath and I've gotta support this roof with some more aluminum or steel bracing. These Ford roofs are very thin. They are flimsy. Uh, as soon as you cut a hole, and now the way I work downstairs is I put my fans and my air conditioners in the center of a rib bay between the, the, the roof struts. I center it in that bay. This is a pretty big distance between the roof struts. So this is never going to support that air conditioner. So what I'm thinking about now, because these roofs are so tinny and cheap and thin, I'm thinking about running steel or aluminum down the entire length of the van in the center to support everything. I'm gonna hang that off my roof struts all the way down. Support The fans are really nothing, but they have some weight to them compared to this roof. Uh, and then I'm gonna rent that forklift. There's a manual forklift over at the depot. I did it for the Vagabond van. Many of you know I gently backed my Pleasureway air conditioner onto the partially open garage door. So gently that I didn't realize I had hit it until I was peeling the whole thing up off the roof of the van. So in spite of that fiasco, the old air conditioner was loud and not blowing very cold anymore. So I decided it was time to replace it with a more efficient, quieter unit. For now, I just want to get the old one down and the new one up on the roof. I'll finish the install in the near future. You just put the air conditioner on, you crank it up, you roll it over, and we can drop it right down. This is a, uh, I call these leveling gaskets. This is from a company called DIY Van. Uh, many of you know Hein. He's got an a eBay channel called Impact Products, and then DIY Van is his website. And he 3D prints these things, and his precision is good. His prices are high on everything, but his precision makes it worth it. These are really well made, really well made. This is for an air conditioner. Uh, specific air conditioner. This is for the Coleman that we're putting on this, this roof. And uh, these are the uh, support blocks that are in the back of the air conditioner. Since we're raising up the air conditioner, we have to raise up those supports. And you know, these are tapered and they've got a little channel to fit in here. Now these little blocks are just for support. So once the air conditioner gets placed, I'll just put a little squirt of silicone on the back just to hold it down but the air conditioner will hold these plates down. This, uh, I use 3M5200, and I go around and I slather the whole underside of this thing. <laughs> Push it down, I clamp it in place, and I weigh it down, I let it set up a little bit, let it skin up a little, squeeze out, then I come in and I finger a fillet all around the perimeter. Now this is, when this cures, and it takes about a week to cure, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, it just fills in all the gaps and we could stop there. And I gotta tell you, I never have stopped there. I've always then covered it with uh, that uh, RV roof tape. These Ford roofs are so curved, high spot being right here in the center of the van. There's such a curve to these roofs. I'm not worried about water intrusion, except for here and here. Um, the water's gonna run off. You know, gravity is my friend in this case, and the water's gonna run right off. So I may just put some coverage on the top here, right along here. You're not gonna get water coming in here and going all the way over to this hole, to that cutoff. It's not gonna happen. Same thing with these guys. They are mounted on such an angle that you really only have to worry about um, caulking this top edge and come down the sides a little bit. The rest of the water, by the time it would weep in with capillary action, you're past the hole. No worries, it's a good system. That's one good thing about this roof, but they are thin, crapola. I shouldn't have said that.
Here's my situation up on the top of the roof. I'm standing here to do my work, and there's the camera, right? I've got a little fill card just kicking in a little bit of light on the side of my face. This is my main cross over there. And then behind me, off on the side, I've got another light, and that is just giving me my little edge work on, the, on my shoulder. See that nice highlight right here and here? That's all that light is doing over there. And this light over there is, that's the main. You can see it's here, and then my cross from the back comes here, and I got a little bit of fill. So let me take you downstairs and show you what's going on. I'm up on a scaffold. That rear light is on a utility cart with sandbags. So it's pretty high up in the air. It's a little tenuous, but I'm alone here today, so I'm not worried about anybody kicking it over. So let's go down and show you the other set. Oh. I don't want to fall off the scaffold. So here it is. There's my fill card up there, the scaffold, and here's that light. That's an accent light, just coming to give me a little bit of edge work on the side of my body, a little bit of sculpting on my face. And we got the same thing over here on this side. Uh, this, I guess I would call my main cross light. See, that's going across the van. You can see my camera up there, across the van. And that's also sitting on another work cart with sandbags, just to keep everything stable. Let's go up this ladder. I'll show you this from the other side. There's my camera. I got that on a box, and the box is sitting on one of Heinz's gaskets so I don't scratch the roof. And that's it. That's where I was standing the whole time over there.